In our studies of carbohydrates from chapter 11, in this lesson we want to look at polysaccharides and fuel storage. Polysaccharides are chains or polymers of carbohydrates. The bonds that connect them are referred to as glycosidic bonds. Sometimes these are called glycan chains. As we'll see, saccharides can also be used to modify other molecules. We can add them to proteins, and we call those glycoproteins. As we've seen already in Chapter 8, we can add them to lipids. In that case, they would be glycolipids. In this case, in this lesson, we want to look at polysaccharides as a fuel storage molecule. We find that we can join these saccharide units together in a variety of ways, and that gives us a tremendous variety of very complex molecules. It's all of those OH groups that allow us to form different bonding arrangements, and that also contributes to the variety. So we need a way to classify and understand them that incorporates that level of complexity. The simplest polymer of a saccharide would be a disaccharide. Uh, they occur in nature most commonly as breakdown products of polysaccharides rather than being constructed in that way. The simplest disaccharide and probably the most common is lactose. Of course this is a milk sugar produced in mammals and it's a disaccharide of galactose and glucose. The linkage connecting them is referred to as a beta-1,4 bond. In other words, we've joined the carbon number 1 of galactose with the carbon number 4 of glucose to form that glycosidic bond. We call that a beta bond. Remember, beta means batter up, and if we read from left to right, that tells us that it's a beta link. It's pictured here as a curve up. In some texts, it's pictured as a line, but it's always pictured as up to indicate beta and so that makes this a beta-1,4 bond. If we had the same sugars, but we joined them in different ways, we connected them in different ways, we'd have a different disaccharide. When we start to form fuel storage carbohydrates, the one most common in plants is starch. They're polymers of glucose and they're joined by alpha-1,4 linkages. In other words, it's 100% glucose, and the linkage is between carbon number one of one molecule and carbon number four of another, but the linkage is alpha, and that's illustrated at the top of your screen here, an alpha-1,4 linkage. Starch actually contains two polymers of glucose. The first is amylose. This is a linear, that is to say it's an unbranched form of starch. And because it has those 1,4 linkages, that produces a kink in the subunits. And as we string several of those together, it leads to this helical shape. So this is amylose. Another polymer present in starch is amylopectin. We have the same type of linkages, alpha-1,4 linkages, and that's illustrated at the bottom of the screen here, except in this case, they're shorter chains, and every 20 to 30 residues, we have a branch point, and that is an alpha-1,6 linkage. And so that leads to a very branched molecule, and that's illustrated in this cartoon uh, illustration at the top of the screen here. It can be a much larger molecule. The benefit is we can store more glucose in the same amount of space. Focus your attention on the center carbohydrate here, the center glucose residue. You'll notice it's connected by alpha-1,4 linkages to a carbohydrate before it and following it, but there's also an alpha-1,6 link to another glucose molecule. That's the branch point. In the illustration at the top here, those branch points are pictured by the red spheres. Of course, we don't store our carbohydrates, our glucose, as starch. We store it as glycogen. But the polymer very much resembles amylopectin that we just looked at, except that the branch points are more common, that is, more frequent. You don't have to remember that number of every 12 residues. It's a very highly branched form, and this allows us to store and retrieve those mo glucose molecules very rapidly, and that's going to be important in metabolism as we get to chapters 12 and 13. The enzyme that digests this, that is, clips off each one of those glucose molecules, works from the end of this polymer. So the question is, would these be reducing or non-reducing ends based on what we discussed in lecture? 
I'm going to leave you with that question, let you think about it, and then we'll talk about it in lecture next time. In our next video lesson, we want to see that carbohydrates can actually serve a function other than just nutrients. That is, it's not just for food. How do these polymers differ from the fuel storage forms that we looked at in this lesson?